David tells us in Psalms 150, Praise ye the Lord. Yeah. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Uh -huh. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the sorcery and harp. Praise Him with the timbre and dance. Praise Him with string instruments and organs. Uh -huh. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding symbols. Let everything that have breath here at the Mount of Blessing Church praise the Lord. Amen. Praise, 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 praise the Lord.
of Acts chapter 20, verses 7 through 12. And I'll give you a minute so everybody can get to that scripture. Acts chapter 20, verses 7 through 12. And this morning we're going to do a responsible reading. So I'll read the first verse and the congregation will read the next one. And when we read 8 to verse 4, we all read together. So I'll start. On the first day of the week, we gathered to observe the Lord's Supper. Paul was preaching, and since he was leaving the next day, he talked until midnight. Verses 8, the congregation. The upstairs room where we met was lighted with many freckling lamps. And then I'll read verse 9. As Paul spoke on and on, a young man named, I can't spell that, but Eutychus, sitting on the win windowsill, became very drowsy. Finally, he sank into a deep sleep and fell three stories to his dead pillow. Congregation, can you do verse 10? Oh, my dear. Yet. Some of you have some health issues. And we're going to pray for you. 
We're going to pray for each other's needs today as we lift our voices before the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right minds. We thank you, Lord, for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Father, we realize that we are living in the last, last days. And we pray, Lord, that you will give us the Holy Ghost unction to stand up for right. We pray, Lord, for each and every member and visitor that is standing here today, recognizing our needs, and we need to cast all of our needs at the foot of the cross. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will bless us, number one, physically, number two, spiritually, number three, financially, number four, on our job, number five, bless our children, number six, Lord, bless our enemies, number seven, Lord, oh, Father, we pray that you would turn around our health crisis so that we can have total good health to worship you. We pray for our incarcerated members. We pray, Lord, that you will move in a mighty way and touch them and bless them. We pray, Lord, for those who are in the valley of decision. Father, it is not about you. I mean, it's not about us. It's not about what we want to do, but it's all about you. So we pray, Lord, that you will move in a mighty way. Stir up their heart. Touch their mind. Call them, Lord, to the house of worship. Bless them, Lord, so that they can give their life over to you. We pray, Lord, that you will bless this service today as we celebrate your, your communion service. We pray, Lord, that you will move in a mighty way and save us and bring us all to have a closer walk with you. And then finally, Lord, when the lightning flash, when the thunder rolls, when the roll is caught upon us, when you call my name, yes, yes, yes. I pray, Lord, that you will find me righteous. Yes, yes. But in the meantime, yes, yes. before you call our name, yes, Lord. pray, Lord, that you would give us strength, yes, yes. that you would encourage us yes, to yes, get Lord. our house in order. Yes, Lord. Father, help us to stop pointing fingers at yes, everybody. Yes, yes. Help us, Lord, to clean up our own backyard. Yes, sir. Yes. Help us, Father, to make sure that our election is sure. Yes. Father, we are so thankful that you have created us to be free moral agents. Yes. So we worship you from our hearts. Yes. We may be from different cultural backgrounds, but we can find unity at the cross. Yes. So bless us, Lord. How you brought us from a mighty long way. Yes, Bless us, Lord, so that we can keep our eyes steadfast on you. Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the bereaved family yes, in Florida, yes, I believe, that who have lost their loved one. We yes. pray, Lord, that you will be their wonderful counselor. Yes. Many parents did not realize that their children was living that type of lifestyle. But in regard to that, yes. You are our wonderful counselor. Yes. And we pray that you will move in a mighty way. Yes. We pray, Lord, for the many lives that was lost at, at that other horrific ordeal. Yes. We pray, Lord, that you will move and touch hearts and, yes. and mend them, Lord, so that they can see your glory. Yes. Father, we need to always remember that you have called us all yes. to be your servant. Yes. To help us, Lord, to put the devil behind us so that we can keep Jesus in front of us. Yeah. Help us, Lord, to keep our eyes steadfast on you so that when this gospel train go to glory, yes. we will be on board yes. and we will rejoice when Jesus finally returns. Yes. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Yeah. amen. God bless you. You all may be seated. God bless you, you all may be seated. It's now time for our guys and conference. And our ask the big folks to stand up.
this is something that he had worked for so many years to save just enough to wait for one day. The disciples looked at the woman and they said, what a waste. Why did she have to pour all that oil on Jesus' feet? Instead, she would have saved that oil so they can use it to help the poor people, the people who need it most. But Jesus told them something that struck me when I was giving the lesson. He says that the poor will always be with you, but you are not going to be with me for a long time. What does this mean? What does this mean to us today? We sing in the song, "All to Jesus I surrender." How much have we surrendered to God? Personally, I'm affected. I've been surrendered all to God, but I know that I'm a work in progress. And God, as long as God gives me life, one day I'll reach that stage when I will say, "In perfection, I have surrendered all to God." So when we give our tithes and offerings, we shouldn't feel like I don't give enough or I don't give much. God knows what is in your heart and He knows when you give it freely to Him. So it's not about equal giving, it's about equal sacrifice and God appreciates what comes from your heart. Okay. We may all stand up. We thank you so much for the gifts that you have given unto us. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. We thank you for the jobs. We thank you for the good health that you have given unto us. And we thank you, Lord, for you have kept the evil one away from destroying that which you have given unto us. Now, Lord, we pray that the little that has been given today, may it be used for the glory and the honor of your name. And, Lord, it is not everyone who was able to give today. To those who are not able to give, we pray the Lord you bless them, and you surprise and meet all their needs so that God, they can have some to give for the next time when we need. We thank you for all the blessings, and we want to thank you again for all that you do unto us. It's for in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
as Paul kept on speaking. When he was overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story and was picked up dead. But verse 10 declares, But Paul went down, threw himself on him, embraced him, and said, Don't be alone, for his life is in him. But verse 11 says, After going upstairs, breaking the bread and eating, he conversed a considerable time until dawn. Then he left. But finally in verse 12 it says, They brought the boy home alive and were greatly comforted. So the first thing we need to understand today is this. The Lord's Supper is a reminder He's alive. Yeah. Can I get a witness yeah. today? Yeah. It was an object lesson. No one wanted. Eutychus fell asleep and then fell to his apparent death. Now the question brings up, was he married? Was his mother in the room? Did he have children yet? And if so, can you imagine the rush of emotions? Perhaps there was a scream. Surely there was a thumb. People race outside in the long-winded preacher. Not talking about your pastor, but talking about Paul. Come on now, work with him today. Push past those who have proclaimed him dead. Miraculously. In a few moments, Paul was able to cry out, He's alive! Can you hear the excited echoes? He's alive! Eutychus is alive! He's okay! The real reminder of each Lord's Supper isn't of the second chance Eutychus got. The remembrance we have is of a Savior, come on now and talk to me, who died for us and yet lived again. Yeah. Now imagine the joy around Jerusalem now. We're coming away from Amarillo. Road. We're leaving Lubbock behind. We're not going to talk about, about Dumas, but we're going to talk about Jerusalem. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, now imagine the joy around Jerusalem. Just minutes into Resurrection Sunday, He's alive, shouts Mary. He's alive, screams John. He's alive, confirms Peter. He's alive, says the governor. He's alive, screams the city. History was changed with just a cry. And every time we take a red cup, we pick up a cry. What a powerful thought that we need to honor today. All who have partaken of this bread and this cup as believers and yet die are alive. But is there any greater joy knowing that one you once you breathe isn't dead? Can you imagine that now? Now, now let me share this with you. Let me share an anecdote. They were pronouncing my mother dead. My mother had a, had a brain hemorrhage in Philadelphia. When I got the call early one morning, it troubled my heart. And I reached out into the end. I raised my hand. I'm a preacher about raising hands one day. I raised my hand and I cried out before the Lord. And when I got to Philadelphia and, 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 and I met my brother and, and, and I took I asked my brother because I was, you know, I was limited bringing stuff on the plane. And when I got to my brother's place, I said, Ramon, do you have any olive oil? Follow me now. He said, sure I do. I said, I need to use it. And he brought the olive oil. Now, I'm not at the hospital. I'm in the insurance. And I used the olive oil and I put it in my hands. And I cried before the Lord at that moment. And I said, Lord, I'm doing a, a symbolic act for my mom. I said, 
said, Lord, I don't care what the doctor said. I know what you can do. I said, Lord, touch her, bless her, spare her life one more time. Yes, Lord. <laughs> when we made it to the hospital and I met my siblings and some of my, my siblings, they were former Adventists and Muslims. But prayer is prayer. Can I get a witness to that? Prayer is prayer when you're praying to the Creator. Amen. And we're united in an all-faith prayer session. Muslim prayer. Christian prayer. And we pray to the God of heaven and earth. Yes, 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 yes. And we say, Lord, bless our mother. Please, Jesus. And let me tell you, when the doctors walk in the room, yes, sir. and they examine my mother, <laughs> they were scratching their head. Oh, and they said, I just don't understand. She should have expired hours ago. But for some unknown reason, the pressure and the blood that was supposed to be in the front of a cranium dissipated. I just don't understand it. I looked at the doctor. I said, you may not understand it, but I understand that you saw a God in heaven who cared for his children. And there was joy in the room. And I am the most we got caught up with the joy and we were just shouting for the goodness of God. Not just the Lord's Supper is a reminder that He is alive. Yes. For my own personal anecdote tells me that He's alive. He's not dead. Yes. Because He hears our prayer yes. in the time of need. But the second thing we need to understand is that the Lord's Supper is an opportunity to be comforted. Now what a beautiful ending to the scripture. After breaking bread. Turn to your neighbor and say, after breaking bread. After breaking bread. Check it out. The people took the young man home alive. And were greatly comforted they had almost lost one they loved, but now he was alive. One of our young men recently returned from military duty in the Middle East. For several months, he has served in a place of great danger, in very unfamiliar and uncomfortable surroundings. When he talked about his joy upon being home, he talked of the simplest thing, his trying to fit like a glove. And his bed was nothing short of a Cadillac experience. He played ball with his son for an hour and enjoyed his favorite meal across the table from his wife. The touch of her hand, he said, was beyond description. The greatest comfort he had ever known wasn't anything elaborate. The greatest comfort was simply being at home. It was the comfort of having familiar surroundings after a very dangerous journey. The disciples, who did I say? The disciples and the close-knit circle around Jesus thought they had lost Jesus. They had called him Messiah. And life had been wonderful when Jesus was around. Can I get a witness today? Suddenly, there was the and it was all over. The grave sealed their hopes, and the comfort was shattered. Then came the cry. Who are you ready for crying? Mm -hmm. Then ready for crying? Mm -hmm. Then came the cry. He's alive! And Jesus 
was in the midst. He came with open hands, standing among them, fixing their breakfast, walking with them, encouraging them, thrilling them, leaving them with the smiles of a man come home from war. Whenever you be, the Lord's Supper is an opportunity to come home. Because somebody strayed away from home. The battle might have been difficult, and you might not have won every fight, but here is forgiveness when you come home. Here you will find grace when you come home. And you open arms of home. Somebody need to come home. Because God is a God of grace. God loves us with an everlasting love. Can I get a witness to that? Amen. And then finally, the Lord's Supper is an invitation. It's an invitation to get started. Perhaps someone is here at the very beginning of a spiritual journey trying to find your way with God as an overwhelming task because you see other people ahead of you making headway, being active in the church, being in public, being experienced. But I'm here to let you know, don't worry about other folks. Amen. Amen. Worry about yourself. Amen. If you never get started, you will never experience love. Don't hold back. Because if you never ask, you never give. Mm -hmm. Just ask. He will give it to you. Amen. Just come. He's here for you. Amen. If you burn him down, I'm here to tell you, nobody in this church has not been as heavenly burdened as I have been. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to let you know he's a burden bearer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's a hard fixer. Yes, yes. If you've been on dope, mm. on drugs that will bring you down, then you got to depend upon drugs to bring you up. Mm -hmm. If you've been losing your mind and you've been on some drugs to give you some continuity and imbalance, let me tell you, I know a man who's a mind regulator. Yes, right. Yes. Right. He can make the insane safe. Yeah. All right. He's looking not for safe folks. He's looking for lost folks. Yes, yes. I was once lost. But he found me. Yes, yes. I used to do some bad stuff. But now I do some good stuff. All right, all right. I don't do stuff. That's good because I have the ability and skill. No. The reason why I do some good stuff is because I turn all my bad stuff over to him. And I keep my eyes on the front. Because if you're a runner, you cannot look back. Because as soon as you look Somebody got ahead of you. Amen. I'm here to let you know. I'm not going to let nobody take my place in glory. Amen. Because I'm running this race. Yeah. And I'm running to win. Yeah. I never yeah. think, what if I lose? Mm. I always think when I win. Come on now. Yeah. 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 Because when you have Jesus yeah. on your side, you can never lose. All you can do is win. Amen. So if you're going through a hurricane in your life, right. and some tornadoes have knocked down most of your dreams, I'm here to let you know Jesus is a super cyclone tornado. Right. And he will tear the devil out of a woman. 
for glory, then you have a ticket stand for hell. Right. I want to make heaven my home. Yes. Yes. Fill her with your 
the Holy Spirit. Anoint her, Lord. Put a fence around her to protect her each and every day. And Father, we ask for your blessings to be upon this church. We pray, Lord, that as we get ready to participate in the foot washing services, that we will get right with each other. We cannot get right with you unless we get right with the person that is next to us if we offended someone. So help us, Lord, to get right through the foot washing service so that our hearts will be right to sit at the Lord's Supper. Bless us, Lord, and when Jesus finally returns, we can raise our hands and we can cry out loud, He's alive! And He's coming back! We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Amen. You know, we the Bible. As the Bible will come down, please make sure you get all of the data information, the name, address, the phone number, the church, and you give Jesus another hearty amen. 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 Praise God for who walk bless and flow. Never be him 306. 